Void moats are the new currency added to No Man's Sky in the Echoes update. You can use them to buy powerful exosuit technology, many great looking customizations, and of course, all of the various parts of the new Voltaic Staff multi tool. There are a few ways to obtain void moats. One is simple and gives a very small amount. These are those wheelbarrows you see in harmonic camps. They can occasionally drop 60 to 90 moats, but they also drop things like multi tool, starship, and exosuit expansion items, among a few other things. So while they drop some useful stuff and are always worth pillaging when you enter a harmonic camp, they aren't worth farming. The next option is as a reward from some Outlaw Space Station mission board missions. Some of those missions will offer 201 to 285 void moats. Not a bad amount, but you can only take one of those missions at a time, and it really isn't worth it. The last option I'm aware of is to do missions directly for the autophage, and this is a very good way to get void moats. First of all, you are going to need to do a little of the They Who Returned mission. This is a new mission that introduces and unlocks the autophage robot race, along with the staff multi-tools and more. If you are having trouble triggering that mission, check out this video where I go over the prerequisites needed. Once you have access to the autophage, you can talk to any UC and offer your assistance. All of these missions pay in reputation, words from their language, and void moats. Some of these missions are very easy and quick with a little preparation, and a few of them aren't so quick, but can be stacked and offer great rewards. The basic idea is that you charge your new polyphonic core multi-tool technology, then activate it to scan for a nearby autophage camp, fly to it and talk to each autophage to offer your assistance. You then either obtain or craft something for them and hand it in, or for some missions you just stack them in your log to complete it once later. After a solid session of camp hopping, you complete the stacked quests in one foul swoop and return to the camps in question and collect. Doing this from the start will likely result in a slow grind, however you can make some immense preparations to speed this up massively, if you are either a vastly established save or you know what most of the missions will ask for. For starters, you will want Atlantidium. You don't actually need that much, each camp scan is 40 Atlantidium, at least on normal mode, and each camp has 3-7 to seven autophage. I haven't seen more than 7 in a single camp, but that is certainly possible. You'd likely use around 1200 per hour on average, so stock up accordingly. Next are the items they will often require you to gather or craft for them. If you have them prepared, it is just a case of immediately handing in the mission. From the large number of missions I've done, these items are Rusty metal in amounts of 220 or so per hand in, you can grab this from green cases found just about everywhere, or just refine it in your brand new personal refiner Mark II using pure ferrite and oxygen. Any kind of ship scrap, literally the vendor trash you get from scrapping a ship. It is measured in its value, usually around 400,000 units worth of scrap. I believe it also includes scrap from multi-tool decommissioning. Chromatic metal is another one, around 350 per hand in. Remember, if you have a large refiner, then wax silver, gold, and the highest form of normal stellar metal, so copper, cadmium, emerald, or indium, indium being the best, in a large refiner to get a lot of chromatic metal for your resources. Amino chamber, solar mirror, hydraulic wiring, launch fuel, antimatter housing, dihydrogen jelly, hermetic seal, all of these are three to four per hand in for whichever it asks for. And while I haven't seen more of that type yet, I expect you may also be asked for magnetic resonators, quantum computers, metal plating, carbon nanotubes, or antimatter. As such, it would be worth carrying a bunch of carbon, condensed carbon, oxygen, ferrite dust, magnetized ferrite, silver, gold, ionized cobalt, salt, chlorine, and dihydrogen. Also buy a few metal plating and microprocessors to save on crafting time, so you can just very quickly craft what they want right away. Or just pre-craft them, but that requires way more initial resource setup. You'll also need the blueprints to craft a few of those, either through various exploratory means, or simply purchasing them from the anomaly with nanites. My favourite method for having constant access to these resources is to have my storage containers built on my freighter, a vast supply of resources in those containers, and a matter beam technology installed in that freighter, giving me access to them whenever needed. You can just call in the freighter to the system you are farming void moats and have constant access to your stores. Do note, however, that in most or all cases you will need the item they request in your inventory. You cannot hand in through the matter beam, but you can craft through it. One of the last items they ask for is paraffinium. I suspect this is always paraffinium because all of my testing took place on lush planets. This type of matching the item to the environment happens a number of times in No Man's Sky. But as it's nice to do it on a paradise world, then why not? Otherwise you may need to stock up on a different planetary mineral. 
There are two final missions the autophage will request of you, and they are not instantly completable, but you can stack them, and complete all at once to hand in after. These are to repair a lost autophage, and to kill eight sentinels. I tested both, collecting but ignoring these missions, and then the void moat gain when completing and handing these in after. The gain was about the same, so it is worth doing. For killing sentinels, just kill eight of them run away, as your stacked missions complete one after another. For repairing the wayward autophage, you need to select one of the missions for it, then go to where it marks and repair the autophage. Provided the mission is focused, it along with all others of that type will complete at once. When handing in your repair and kill quests just work from last to first, and every camp you go to, talk to every autophage there. Some camps will give two or three of these missions, so if you only talk to one you may inadvertently go back and forth. Talking to all of them is the quickest method to ensure you have handed in all at that camp. And sometimes there will be an autophage that has either reset and is offering a new mission, or that you simply missed with the less than suitable radius of your scan. Provided you mean business and only offer assistance for the missions when in a camp, 20,000 void modes per hour is very doable, likely more. A few hours and you can pretty much buy everything. If you want a more casual approach, you can offer Alantidium and Shards to each you talk to for more rep, or get an extra word from them, but really, you'll get a lot of words and rep from their missions. You may be wondering why you'd want to farm so many moats. Well, here are all of the things you can buy with them. There are 15 head customizations for your character, including a synthetic gek one. Four armor customizations, which are an armor, a cloak, a wrap, and a drape. Three head cloth customizations, which are hood, scarf, and facial mask. Then there are different staff components. On top of the three parts you get completing the autophage quest line, there are further seven head components. These head components dictate the class and layout of the assembled staff. So that S-Class spot I mentioned in the previous video, it's S-Class for the original head component you can craft, but not necessarily for these other seven. There are six more core components, and then six more pole designs. From the current research, the poles and cores don't change the stats on the assembled staff, which make it easier to get the design you want in S-Class. You can buy repair kits, but that's more of a route to go when you have perfect everything, as the last thing is something you'll really want to buy a fair few of. This is a unique technology type. These are the rebuilt exosuit modules, and they are a separate exosuit technology type, meaning you can have three of them on top of your other exosuit technology modules to further boost your stats. At first look, this at the very least could make your defensive shield stat bumped up by a further 50% of what was possible before. These modules can have between 2 and 4 total stats on them, with 4 stats being a rare chance. The potential stats are shield strength, core health, life support tanks, solar panel power, fuel efficiency, and sprint distance. The possible strength of these stats are identical to the Sentinel Exosuit modules, so we basically have a secondary set of those already powerful modules that we can layer on and it appears that these modules along with the Sentinel variants do share adjacency bonuses with each other and native defense modules. This is fantastic news for those playing at the hardest difficulties. And there you have it. For this preparation, will save you an enormous amount of time. Efficiency is key to great riches. More Nomad Sky Echoes content coming. If there's anything you are particularly curious about in the game, let me know below. Might even be the next video. Have a great day.